everyone, Dave here, I uh, hope you're well. Um, just wanted to be able to share some thoughts about something that we've been discussing in Eastgate Youth, which uh, a lot of people have been discussing because this has been probably the main thing in the news across this country and uh, probably across the whole world. Um, and that's been the subject of race and equality, and in particularly what our response should be as Christians and as the church. Uh, this has obviously been triggered by some truly tragic events uh, with the horrible murder of George Floyd and then the subsequent protests and demands for justice and then the very wide-ranging discussions that have been triggered because of that and we've looked at this issue before but really just wanted to be able to say that yes we are still looking at that again this is something we've been discussing in our groups and just wanted to be able to set out some of the thoughts, some of the ways that we've been thinking, primarily these thoughts are my own. These are just some of the ways that I've been looking at it and processing what's been going on, mainly with the aim of looking at myself and just trying to think, what are my blind spots? What was I less aware of acknowledging that whilst I would never have classed myself as being racist or aggressive to anyone because of uh, the colour of their skin, but acknowledging that that's a big difference between that and seeking positively to understand people who are different to me, who have a different background, uh, a different culture, and really seeking to reach out in love. And so there's a sense I think we're all having of seeking, I need to grow in my understanding in this area, and especially realising that there are problems that many people have faced due to the colour of their skin that I haven't, um, and realising that there have been plenty of times when life has been a lot harder for some people uh, because of their race and realising that some of those times I've been unaware of, of some of that and that I'm just seeking to humbly grow in my understanding here. So I just want to be able to set out some of our thinking here and first off we're just going to turn to scripture. Um, this is our, our guiding point, this is the word of God and really just to reaffirm our belief um, and the universal Christian belief uh, that all men and women are equal in the eyes of God um, and all created and worthy of equal respect and dignity and love. So I'll just read out a couple of passages for you. I don't presume in any way to tackle all of this subject or all that scripture has to say on it in just a few minutes. But I'm just going to read a bit and I'm going to give my thoughts. So Genesis 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And this is the starting point and this is the template for all of humanity. That everyone is made in the image of God. Male and female. And it doesn't make any exceptions here. It doesn't say some people groups, some races were made in the image of God. No, this is universal. This is the starting point of human history. And that has been the case for every human who has walked the planet ever since. They are made in the image of God. And there is, there is an innate dignity in just being human because you are made in his image. And that applies to absolutely everyone, all of us. And then if you flip over through into Galatians 3. Galatians 3 verse 26 to 28. It says, you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. This passage really talks about the unity that we should be seeking um, as Christian believers and about how everyone um, can be seen equally in the eyes of God, but also in their status um, as part of the church and as Christians and as the way we interact with one another and interact with the world. And Paul isn't trying to deny the existence of these groups. He's not saying that men and women don't exist. He's not saying uh, that uh, different uh, races exist. You know, he said, when he says there is neither Jew nor Greek, Paul was Jewish and he widely acknowledged his Jewish heritage. He never denied that. Um, uh, it's, but this is saying that None of these things separate us, that there is no hierarchy here, that none of these things should be dividing us. For it says, you're all one in Christ Jesus. And this is the wonderful truth here, that it doesn't matter uh, your race, your nationality, 
your gender, your social status, whether you're rich or poor, we're all one in Christ Jesus. And we all have that equal footing. And it's seeking just to grow in our understanding of that in the way in which we interact with one another and which we treat treat one another. So not only saying you, yeah, you as an individual, you are made in the image of God. You are worthy of my respect and my love and my honour just because of that. But that also amongst us as the church, we are all united. We are one. We are one in Christ Jesus. And that we acknowledge we're different. We're diverse. We come from huge kind of range of different backgrounds, but actually we are united in Christ. We will have the same Holy Spirit. And so I think my 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 thoughts around this as to how we should be going forward as a church, there's no one answer and different churches will have different callings in this area, just as different individuals will have different responses. But my challenge that has mainly been to myself, but I would also put uh, to all of us is are we seeking to grow in our love and our understanding of people who are from different backgrounds to us? Because too often we can uh, be a bit too uh, quick to dismiss this as being not a problem for us. Um, because we can think, oh, that's fine. You know, I, I, I'm never racist towards anyone. You know, uh, I don't discriminate against people. I've never been angry either physically or verbally uh, towards someone because of the colour of their skin. That, that, that should be like the basic level of requirement for all of humanity. You can't look at that and say that's a huge success. That is the absolute minimum level that is required of us. Okay, The, the, uh, uh, the absence of aggression is not the same as growing in love and respect. You wouldn't apply this to any other aspect of life. If I give you an example, um, if, uh, if you employed someone in a workplace or if you are employed in a workplace, you wouldn't expect a report on that uh, that employee saying, this employee is exemplary. You know, uh, they never punch other employees, um, they don't steal from the business, and they've never tried to set fire to the building. No, you would presume that an absence of destructive behaviour is the baseline level that you could expect of that person. You would expect an exemplary to be talking about how they are diligent, how they're a great team player, other things like that. If you want another example, you know, uh, I have two young children. Uh, they think I'm a good dad. Uh, they don't. If you are to ask them, why is Dave a good dad? They would not list uh, uh, the absence of negatives. They would not say, oh, actually, he never hits us. He's not abusive towards us. He doesn't let us go hungry. He doesn't let us go, I can't leave us, you know, lock us out of the house. No, th those are the basic requirements for, for parenthood. You can't celebrate that. No, my kids would say, uh, Dave's, you know, he's a good dad because he makes us waffles and he watches Clone Wars cartoons with us and he teaches us to ride a bike and he spends time with us. Again, the absence of destructive behaviour is not the hallmark of success. And we should never be looking at this area of race inequality saying, I am never racially aggressive or discriminatory towards anyone, so I don't need to do anything else. No, that should be the absolute basic level of all humanity. Now, sadly, sometimes we see, as in recent times, people fall below that standard and we do need to speak out and campaign for, you know, in the right ways uh, for justice to be done. And when people are falling below that even basic level of required humanity, that, yeah, that needs to be addressed. But we should never be complacent and say, yeah, because I never do those things, I've got no problems. The, you know, this isn't an issue for me. All of us have blind spots and all of us... Uh, don't know what it's like necessarily to uh, have had the background of other people. And so I put it to you that our aim in this is saying, never be complacent by just saying, I don't do the destructive stuff. Look to be a people who grow together, who grow in unity and in understanding, who value one another and who are seeking to treat each other as we would want to be treated, not just in an absence of harm, but in growing in love, in seeking, how do I best know you so that I can understand and love you? How do I know how you're wired? How do I know about your background so that when it comes to how I understand you and make you feel loved and part of this family, that I'm including you to the best of my ability whilst always seeking just to grow in this myself? So that's some of my thoughts. That's what I'm seeking to do at the moment. I would encourage you to find 
you know, whatever resources you're tapping into, be that, you know, TED Talks, books on the subject, or even just starting conversations and, and not being afraid uh, to have those difficult chats with people saying, you know, what do you feel that I don't understand about you? Is there anything that I've done that, that's made it obvious that really I haven't got where you're coming from? And always be seeking just to grow in love for one another. So there you go. That's just a few of our thoughts. As I've said, it can't even begin to cover the whole range of this subject, but I hope it just helps to stimulate some more of the conversation.